Before start modeling the knife, go to the link in the description and download the blueprint. Go to the quad view. Drag and drop the blueprint into the top view. Place it in the middle of the scene. Move the blueprint downward, so we can design the knife without any intersections. Select the default cube and go to edit mode. Switch to wireframe mode. Go to the loop cut tool and click on the cube. You can use the mouse wheel or the option box to increase the number of cuts. Now move these vertices according to the blueprint. Extrude these vertices using the extrude tool. Add a subdivision surface modifier. This is how the model looks from the perspective view. Add a loop cut in the middle. Delete the bottom vertices. Add a mirror modifier. Set the axis to Z axis. Move the mirror modifier to the top. Increase the subdivision level. Move the top vertices downward. Now select these vertices and extrude them all the way to the end of the handle. Using the loop cut tool, add some loop cuts. Move the vertices to match the blueprint. If you feel that there are not enough loop cuts, add some using the loop cut tool. Add another loop cut in the middle. Let's harden the outer edges. To do that, click on the loop cut tool. Click on the model and drag it. While dragging the loop cut, press E to turn on the even option. Make sure it's aligned to the outer edges. If not, press F to flip. Select these vertices accordingly, and merge them at the last. Let's merge these vertices too. Select these vertices and move them down to make the sharp edge of the knife. Let's adjust some of these vertices. Looks like I made a mistake. I forgot to turn on the clipping option in the subdivision surface modifier. That's why it has these bottom faces when I extruded the vertices. So I'm going to delete them. Let's turn on the clipping option. I'm going to scale the model down a little bit along the z-axis. Increase the subdivision level to 3. Since we have scaled down the object, we have to apply the scale. If not, it will be a problem when unwrapping the model. Select these faces and duplicate them. Press Escape to place the duplicated faces in their original location. Go to Mesh, Separate, and click Selection. Select all the faces of the duplicated mesh and extrude them using the Extrude tool. Let's move these vertices. Add a loop cut as before. Merge these vertices to the last selected vertex.
Select the handle and go to the local view. Add some loop cuts like this. Alt left click to select this edge loop. Move it down. Add a polygon cylinder. Set vertices to 12. Scale down the top vertices. Inset the top faces using the inset tool. Add a subdivision surface modifier. Inset the bottom face. Select all the vertices, scale them down, and place them on the handle. Add a mirror modifier and set the axis to Z. Duplicate the mesh. Turn off the x-axis option of the subdivision level modifier. Add another loop cut. Move the vertices to match the gray color line. Select these vertices. Go to Edge, and Bevel Edges. Using the knife tool, Add some cuts on the model. Press Enter to complete the cut. If you have unwanted vertices like this, dissolve them. Inset these faces two times. Move the faces down. Let's fix the positions of these vertices. Now we have a clean line on the knife. Let's correct this issue. To texture the model, we have to unwrap the model first. So go to UV Editing tab. Select the knife and go to the local view. This way we can mark UV seams freely. Decrease the subdivision level. Select these edges and mark UV seams. Let's unwrap the model to see how it looks. Select this edge loop and mark seams. Select these edges and mark seams. In most times, it's better to unwrap the model using the conformal method.
Let's mark seams on these meshes too. Apply the mirror modifier. Select all the objects. Go to Object, Shade Smooth. Apply the mirror modifiers of other objects. Select the knife. Alt left click to select this edge loop. Mark seams. Select all the objects, go to edit mode, select all the vertices, and unwrap the mesh. Now, let's create some materials and textures for the model. To do that, head over to the shading tab. Create a new material. In the shading viewport, press Shift A to open the add menu. Go to texture, image texture. Connect the color and the base color. Click new on the image texture node. Set a proper texture size and click OK. Go to the Texture Paint tab. Choose Single Image as the Texture Painting mode. Choose the texture you have created before. Go to the Texture Properties tab and click on New. Open a suitable metal texture. I got these textures from textures.com. Go back to the Active Tool and Workspace Settings tab. Choose the metal texture. Set Mapping option to Stencil. Right-click and drag to move the stencil. Control right click and drag to rotate the stencil. Shift right click and drag to scale the stencil. Toggle local view and paint on the model. You can change the brush radius as per your requirements. Now go to the shading tab. Add a texture coordinate node. Select the principled BSDF node. Press Shift D to duplicate the node. Add another image texture. Connect object option to vector. Add a mapping node into the middle. With this node, you can control the texture scale and other attributes. Open a light gray color metal texture. Make sure you have clicked on the Save All Images option. Add a Mix Shade node and connect the principled BSDF nodes to it. Add another Image Texture node and connect it to the factor. Create a new texture and name it Mask. Remove the texture. Choose the Mask Texture. Go to Viewport Shading. Now you can paint on the mask. Let's decrease the strength. Save all images. Set the metallic value to 1 for all principled BSDF nodes. I want to increase the lightness of my second metal texture. So I'm going to add a mix color node and set it to screen. Add a color ramp node and connect it to the roughness channel. Invert the colors as black means zero roughness and white means full roughness. Do the same thing to the first principled BSDF node. Add a bump node. Connect it to the texture node and the principled BSDF node. 
Adjust the strength as per your requirements. I'm going to paint more on the mask texture. Create a new material for the handle. Add an image texture node. Create a new texture. Choose the texture. Go to the Texture Properties tab and open a wood texture. Select the handle of the knife and go to the local view. Paint on the model just like we painted on the knife. I forgot to increase the strength of the brush. Add a color ramp node and connect it to the principled BSDF. Add the bump node and connect it to the normal channel. Create new material for these meshes. Import the light color metal texture. Add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Connect all the nodes. Set the metallic value to 1. Connect the texture node and roughness value via the color ramp node. Invert it as usual. Now we have completed the texturing. Make sure you have saved all the images. Now you can render it. This is my final render. See you next time.